find the length of the curve parametrized by the vector valued function r of t such that t is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to the natural log of three. So let's think about what exactly we're looking for here. We want the length of this beautiful curve from a to b. And we know that the integrand is going to be defined as the magnitude of the tangent vector. And we're integrating with respect to that arbitrary parameter, t. So, let's go ahead. Given this vector-valued function, let's start by finding the tangent vector. So, we need to differentiate. So, the tangent vector, in this case, is going to be defined as 2 times the natural exponential raised to the 2t. The y component becomes 4 times the natural exponential raised to the 2t. And last but not least, that z component becomes 4 times the natural exponential raised to the 2t. Now, looking at this, we see that we have a scalar multiple of 2 times the natural exponential raised to the 2t. So we can rewrite this vector as 2 times the natural exponential raised to the 2t multiplied by the vector 1, 2, 2. And now have, pulling that scalar multiple out like this is going to make finding the magnitude or the length of this tangent vector a little bit easier, but please note that you'll get the same answer either way. So taking this vector and finding its length, because we have the length of a scalar multiple property, we can keep that 2 times the natural exponential raised to the 2t out in front of our distance formula. So we have the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2 squared, which is 4, plus 2 squared, which is 4. And look at this. We have 2 times the natural exponential raised to the 2t multiplied by the square root of 9 which of course we know goes to three, woohoo! So this leaves us with the simplified tangent vector, six times the natural exponential raised to the two t. And so we're now officially ready to take this and find the length of the curve. So here we go, the length of this curve from zero to the natural logarithm of three, of six times the natural exponential raised to the 2t dt. And this is a general antiderivative. We're left here with 6 multiplied by the natural exponential raised to the 2t divided by 2. And we're now evaluating from 0 to the natural log of 3. And we can simplify a little here. We know, of course, that 2 goes into 6 3 times. So this is equal to 3 and now we have this is multiplied by the natural exponential raised to the 2 times the natural log of 3 minus the natural exponential raised to the 0. And now be careful here with your algebra. In order to apply the inverse property of the natural exponential and the natural logarithm, we need to use the algebraic property of logarithms and bring this 2 to the exponential position of your logarithm. So let's just quickly recall the product property of logarithms. So if you have a constant in front of a natural logarithm or a common logarithm, this is equivalent to the natural log of a raised to the b power. So we're going to use this to simplify our evaluation, and this becomes 3 multiplied by the natural exponential raised to the natural log of 3 squared minus, and we of course know that anything raised to the 0 goes to 1. So you have minus 1. So now that we have the natural exponential tangent to the natural logarithm, we can apply the inverse property and they undo the effects of each other, leaving us with 3 multiplied by 3 squared, which is 9, minus 1, or 3 multiplied by 8, for a beautiful final answer of 24. And because this is a length, this is 24 units. And again, this is our beautiful final answer.